Right, the technique is the trial and error. So actually, the trial and error technique is something that we learn in school. So I'm not sure about you, but when I learned it at school before, uh, the quadratic, how you do factorize that, it start with trial and error. Then only after you know trial and error, then only you start using the calculator. But the thing is that I noticed that when I teach students, like they don't really know how to do trial and error. They always rely on their calculator. So it seems that that is being stressed at school these days, I suppose. I'm not sure about that. But trial and error is going to be something like this. For example, you have x squared plus 4x minus 5. And how do you do factorization if you don't have your calculator? So you, you know that um, x squared is created by multiplying x and x. So that is how you got x squared. And um, so here at the back, I have to create a 5. And I know that the only combination of having a 5 is going to be 1 multiplied by 5. So that is going to be the only way of 5 multiplied by 1. But now what I have to do is I have to create a negative of 5. Sorry. So I have to create a negative of 5. That's right. So meaning that one of this number is going to be a negative. Either it's going to be negative 1 or negative of 5. And the other one is going to be positive. And I have to create a 4x in the middle of this. So how do I create a 4x? And of course, if I have 5 and 1, so the only way to have 4 is when I have uh, 5 minus 1. So that is going to create a 4. So therefore, uh, my 5 is going to be positive and this one is going to be negative. So when I multiply these two, it's going to be negative 5. And then this is going to be one bracket. This one is going to be one bracket. So when you do the factorization, so this is going to be x minus 1. So multiply by x plus 5, okay? And of course, like for what students are most familiar with is using your calculator. And if you use your calculator, you will get that x is going to equal 1 and also x equal negative 5. And I would like to remind you about this. When you get x equal 1, so that is actually a factorization of x minus 1. And when you get x might equal minus 5, that is actually x plus 5 because this is going to equal 0. When you take this equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, then only x is going to equal 1. So that is how you get this value right here. Okay, so please be careful about that if you're using your calculator for factorization. But for this trial and error, so this is how it's done. But I know that you're familiar with using your calculator and I have nothing against that. So I'm fine with you using your calculator for factorization. So this is just for your knowledge, just in case that you don't have one. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to proceed to the second one, which is going to be y squared plus 10y plus 25. So it's still going to be the same idea. So I'm going to have uh, y and y. So here I have to uh, sort of like be mindful on how do I create a 25. So 25, it could be either from 1 multiplied by 25, or it could also, uh, also be 5 and 5. But the main point is that, I have to create a 10, so automatically this one is going to be uh, out of the question because I know that if I have plus 5 plus 5, so that is going to equal a 10. So that is why when I choose this number, here I'm going to pick 5 and 5, okay? And when I add this two together, so both are going to be plus and plus because I need a positive and this is plus 10 as well. So when I do factorization, this is going to equal y plus 5. So multiply it by y plus 5, so which is actually y plus 5 to the power of 2. So that will be the second factorization. Okay, so that is number 2. And number 3, so I'll end up with 2x to the power of 4 plus 7x squared plus 6. So it's there. How did I come up with the z, by the way? That is 7x squared. Oh, so I actually missed that one. This is actually z. 2z to the 4 plus 7 z square. And the last one is going to be 6. So it's going to be still the same idea. But now uh, be mindful because here the first term is going to be in terms of no longer z by itself. But it's actually 2z to the power of 4. But the idea is still going to be pretty much the same. So how do I create 2z to the power of 4? So I'm going to have 2z to the power of 2, so multiply it by z square. So that is how I'm going to come up with 2z to the 4. Okay, however, we have 6 over here, and we know that there are two ways of creating a 6. So it could either 2 multiplied by 3, 
or it could also be 1 multiplied by 6. And I have a constant 2 right there as well. So how do I create that? Mm. So this is why it's called try and error. If I put 1 and 6 right here, can I create a 7 right there? No, because this is going to be multiplied by 2 is going to be 12. And this is going to be 1. And this 2 has to be positive. So it's going to be either plus and plus or minus and minus. So that's not going to happen. So I don't think it's going to be 1 and 6. And even if I were to reverse the row, 6 and 1, I don't think that is going to happen as well. Because here I'm going to have 6 and 1. Um, yeah, if I add them together, I can actually create a 7. So this is going to be plus and plus. So multiply these two, I'll create a 6. And when I multiply this 2, so that is going to be 2z square. And when I multiply this 2, that is going to be 6z square. Uh, and no, that's not the case. So 6 and 1 is out. It's ruled out. So now we'd, let's start with 2 and 3. So let's say if I'm going to put 2 over here and 3 right there. And again, so it's going to be plus and plus in order for it to become positive of 6 or minus and minus. But because of the plus right here, I'm pretty sure both of them is going to be plus. And what happened is that if I multiply this and this, so it's going to be 4z square. And this is going to be 3z square. And yes, that will create a 7. So that's why the factorization of this is going to be... 2z square plus 3. So this at the top is going to be one bracket. And at the bottom, it's going to be another bracket, which is z square plus 2. And you can verify that if you expand that. This will be the answer. Again, as I mentioned in the previous example, if you already get the idea by now, you don't need to uh, listen further. Feel free to skip and proceed to the next subtopic or start with the exercise right away. Right, so number four, so I'm going to have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Okay, so this looks a bit tricky though. Mm. So how are we going to deal with it when you come across something like this? So that's number four, x cubed minus, no, this is not the one, I copied that wrongly. So it's going to be x cubed minus 2x squared, minus 11x, and plus 12. So that is how it looks like. Mm, okay. So what would you recommend for this one, seriously? This looks tricky, though. So this method right here, it's only applicable when you have x to the power of 2. And you can actually make it uh, in terms of power of 2, then it's possible. But when you have to the power of 2, I don't really advise you to actually use the trial and error. So the easiest way is that what you can do is you can use your calculator. And let's use your calculator for this. And But be careful when you use the polynomial. So you're going to use the degree of 3 because it's... Um, what do you call that, a cubic function. Um, here, my a value is going to equal 1, so because this is actually uh, 1x to the power of 3, 1. And here, I have a negative of 2, so put negative of 2 in your calculator. So this is going to be negative of 11, and the last one is going to be 12. So when you use your calculator for this, you will get three roots. Okay, the first root is going to be negative 3. So the second root is going to be 4, and the last root is going to be 1. So meaning that when we do the factorization, so it's going to look like this. So the first one is going to be the first root. So negative 3 is from x plus 3 equals 0. That's how we got negative 3. And 4 is going to be from x minus 4 equals 0. And the last one is going to be from x minus 1. So basically, this is going to be the outcome. So it's possible to use your calculator, simply use your calculator when you have 3 and above. But I think your calculator uh, can do 3. The latest one, the white one, can actually do until 4. But I think the older one can only do until 3. So it's not possible to do uh, until 4. So there's limitation to your calculator as well. Okay, so number 5. So number 5 is going to be a bit different. So let me explain this to you thoroughly. We have x cubed minus 3x squared 
plus 6x minus 4. Okay, so when you use your calculator for this, so let's find roots. So what are going to be the roots for this? So my A value is going to equal 1, B value is going to equal negative 3. So please be careful with this when you plug it into your calculator. Be mindful that B is equal negative of 3, not just 3. And C is going to equal 6, and the last value is going to equal negative of 4. So because this is to the power of 3, you will get 3 roots. So the first root is going to be 1, a value of 1. So the second root is a complex number. In fact, I have 1 plus square root 3i, and the last one is 1 minus square root 3i. So what happened is that, so these two right here, they are actually complex number. Okay, so what's happening over here? So what's happening is that your, um, what you call factorization is going to look like this. So your factorization from the first one, so it's going to be x minus 1, and you're going to have another function in the bracket. And what happened with the function is that this function is going to be irreducible. So that is why when you factor them, so it gives you two complex roots. So how do you find what is going to be the irreducible function? But what we know for sure is that, so this is going to be x to the power of 2. Then only we will get two uh, roots. Okay, so it's going to be in terms of x squared plus a constant, let's say it's going to be ax and a constant of b. So now you cannot leave it like this, but you have to figure out what is going to be the value of a and what is going to be the value of b. So let me uh, explain to you a simple way of doing this. How do you figure out the value of a and b? Okay, this is how it's going to be done. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to expand this. So when I expand this, uh, I will end up with x to the power of 3 uh, plus ax squared plus bx minus x squared minus ax minus b. And this over here is supposed to be equivalent to this. So it's going to equal x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put together the term with the same power. I'm going to arrange them together according to the power. So start with the highest power, which is going to be x to the power of 3. And then I'm going to collect the term with x to the power of 2, which is this 2 right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor them. So here I'll end up with plus x squared. So a minus 1. And then I collect the term with x to the power of 1, so which is this 2 right there. So here I'll end up with b minus a. And this is minus b. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, in order to find the value of A and B, so I am going to, uh, sorry, let me, mm, here's how later only, clean this, so you can see that clearly. Okay, so we're going to compare them. So how, what do I mean by comparing them? So this two, they are the equivalent. So this two, this two meaning uh, referring to this, and this two, they are actually equivalent, they are equal. It's the same thing. I'm trying to factor whatever that we have at the top. So here, what, I, what we can see is that this is 1x squared and this, sorry, 1x cubed and the bottom is uh, also 1x cubed. So the idea is going to be something like this. If I have ax squared is equal to 2x squared, so what is going to be my value of a? Automatically, if I were to compare this, my a value is going to equal 2. So that is the idea that we're going to apply here as well. So what happened is that, so a minus 1, a minus 1, so which is actually the coefficient of x squared, at the top, it is supposed to be negative of 3. So here, a minus 1 is going to equal negative of 3. So I know that a is going to equal negative 3 plus 1, so it's going to be negative of so that is going to be my a value. Okay, and then uh, for the case of constant, so actually when I wanted to identify what is going to be the value of b, I can either take this one or this one, but I'm going to take the easiest. And here this is going to be the constant. So for my expansion, so the constant is going to be negative b, and up here my constant is equal negative of 4. So when I do the comparison, so negative of b is going to equal negative of 4. So therefore, my b value, that is going to equal 4. Now, I already know what is going to be the value of a. I already know the value of b. So therefore, my factorization is going to be x minus 1 multiplied by x squared, x squared plus a, which is negative 2x. 
and b which is going to equal 4 okay and if you plug in the, this value you can check if you plug in this value into your calculator and find the roots so you should be able to get this that is how you know that your factorization is correct and of course this one we're going to leave it like this because it is irreducible okay let me show you another example on this i know this might be confusing for some of you so let's do a, another similar example on this so the last one is going to be very similar to number fifth so x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 10 again so what we're going to do is we're going to find the roots so i plug in that my a value is going to equal 1 b is going to equal negative 2 c5 d negative of 10 and i figured that my roots so the first one is equal to the second one is actually a value of 2.236i complex number and the other one is going to be negative 2.236i which is also a complex number so we know that uh, my first function is going to be a linear factor of x minus 2 and then i'm going to have x squared which is going to be irreducible so it's going to be in this form so i'm going to have x minus 2 and a function of x squared plus ax plus b and if i were to expand this like what i did previously i'll end up with x to the power of 3 plus a x squared plus bx minus 2 x squared minus 2 ax and minus 2 b again i'm going to rearrange according to the power starting from the highest until the lowest so x cubed plus x squared so this let's collect these two terms so i'll end up with a minus 2 and then i collect all the term with x to the power of 1 so this 2 right there so i will end up with b minus 2a and the last one is going to be negative 2b and i'm going to start comparing okay so first i'm going to compare i wanted to find the value of a and i'm going to compare the coefficient of x to the power of 2 so for this one my coefficient is going to be a minus 2. Uh, actually, what is a coefficient? So when you have a variable, for example, if I have 2x, so this 2 over here, so this is called as the coefficient, the constant that goes in front of the variable. So that's called a coefficient. So when I say coefficient, I'm referring to that. So x squared for this case, so the coefficient is given by a minus 2. And at the top, my coefficient is given by negative of 2. So from here, I know that my a value is going to equal 0. So that is going to be my first constant. And then uh, I'm going to find b, and the easiest will be the constant, because it's b by itself. So the constant will be x, I'm comparing x to the power of 0, x to the of 0 is constant. So negative 2b is going to equal, here I'm comparing with this constant as well. It's a number, it doesn't have x in it. So here, this is going to equal negative of 10. So from here, I know that b is going to equal negative 10 over negative 2. That is going to equal a 5. So those are going to be my two constant values, a and also b. So therefore, when I substitute, so my factorization is going to equal so x minus 2. And now I can replace the value of a and b. So that will be given by x squared plus 0x simply a zero and my b value is going to equal five so therefore for number six my factorization is simply going to be x minus two and x squared plus five and this value over here is actually just square root of five i and square root negative square root of five i so when you verify when you put this into your calculator you will get these two uh, numbers as being your roots okay so that is going to be the method of try and error